Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome to the end of 2021. Happy New Year! And just like with what I usually do at the end of every year, I try to just sort of talk about some highlights that came out from the year. Um, as far as this year as a whole goes, I won't go into too much detail, but I will say that I think this year overall wasn't that great, unfortunately. Um, a lot of, like, not great things happened. Like, better than last year, sure, but this year still wasn't that much better, unfortunately. And I don't really see it getting better anytime soon. I think next year is going to be the same, and then the year after that, and then the year after that. And honestly, it's pretty depressing, and it sucks that we have to go through it. But as far as the little guys like you and I go, I think the only thing we can do is just stay positive and just sort of not ignore the negatives, but just sort of talk about the positives that came out this year. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, I uh, forgot what I was going to say for a second. But this is going to be a podcast-like video, so don't expect the background to change or anything like that. This is mainly just so, like, if you want to have something to listen to while you do work or something like that. So just sort of have, like, you know, me just talking in the background or whatever. So, yeah. Or if you just want to hear my just genuine thoughts about some of these things that are coming out or that came out or whatever. You know, whichever happens, happens. Or whatever you're here for, you're here for. I, at the end of the day, I don't really care. Do what you gotta do. I just want to talk about uh, some highlights I had of this year. So, yeah. Anyway, I rambled on for far too long. Let's just get right into this. So, right off the bat, I just want to say this is pretty cool. So, a game that I've been really wanting to play for almost 10 years now is Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Now, this game, like, I remember seeing it, like, I first got into Jurassic Park when the 20th, uh, 20th anniversary happened in 2013. I saw it in theaters, it blew me away, and I just loved it. And then I discovered Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, which I was obsessed with Zoo Tycoon 2. So when I found out they made a game like that, but with Jurassic Park assets, I thought that was really cool. I thought, I gotta have this. Unfortunately, the game cost like 300, like 200. At the time, it was very expensive. And I was very like sad because I've always wanted to play this game, but I never could. So yeah, whenever I found links online, like, oh, this is how you download it for free. It always messed up my computer, and I had to fix it, which was very, very upsetting, but, you know, yeah, also, that's the garage opening, I'm sorry about that, but, yeah, so, for the longest time, I never got to play this game. The closest thing I ever got to playing it was in 2017, I played a modded version of it, but that doesn't really count too much. Uh, it wasn't until the beginning of this year that I found a good site. And I downloaded Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. And, yeah, I downloaded it. At first it didn't have sound, but then I found another version with sound. So, yeah, unfortunately it was missing the music. But overall, I played through Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. And I, you know, got to five stars on the main, like, campaign or whatever. And it was great. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis is a fantastic game, and I love it to death. Definitely one of the best games in the Jurassic Park franchise. Uh, there are some minor things I don't like about it, though. I don't like the building constraints. Uh, in the game, they give you, like, a limit of, like, what you can build. Like, oh, you can only have eight hatcheries. You can only have, like, this amount of fences. And I don't really like that at all. But thankfully, there's a way to go into the game and just sort of, like, get rid of that limit. And, or at least change it to, like, from... You know, change it from, like, having to only 8 hatcheries to 9,999 hatcheries, which is really cool. So, yeah. Only for PC, though. I'm sure you can mod, like, the Xbox version or PS2 version, but, you know, it's easier to play this game on PC, in my opinion. So, yeah. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, great game, and I'm so happy I finally got to play it after all these years. So, yeah. Uh, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous got three new seasons this year. Honestly, I don't care about this show. Like, when it first came out, it was cool because it had that charm of being, like, the first Jurassic Park animated series because there was the Chaos Effect cartoon and the cartoon for the original movie that got canceled in the 90s, so it's nice to have, like, an actual animated Jurassic Park series, but honestly, like, like after watching it, it's like, it's a, it's a cute little show. You know, it's not my favorite thing ever, but for what it is, I think it's fine. Um, I think season four goes in a weird direction, but... Yeah, I'm not really the target uh, demographic, so for me, it's just kind of like, you know, whatever. I don't really care that much. So, yeah, um, overall, Cape Cretation, uh, these three new seasons, not bad. Uh, not great, not my favorite seasons ever, but still, not bad. 
So, yeah. Um, this year we got the Jurassic World Dominion prologue, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought it was interesting how, like, it went back 65 million years ago and we saw the dinosaurs of, like, how they looked, like, back then. Because, you know, the frog DNA tampers with the DNA. Now, people are complaining that it's not accurate. That's, oh, they're trying to represent, uh, you know, past from so long ago. It should be more accurate. I don't really care. Like... Accurate looking designs would be really nice, but at the same time, it's like, I don't care. You know, it's like, it's what, like, it's a movie. Like, in this movie, like, maybe the dinosaurs look different in this movie universe than in, like, you know, our universe. Because, let's think about this realistically. That has never happened before. Like, nowhere has there ever been, oh, let's recreate dinosaurs by using frog DNA. And the mosquito, like, blood and amber, how they get the dinosaur DNA to begin with, like, that gone bad, you know, that's bad, that's bad now, it's not like, you know, oh, it's fresh for millions of years, no, that expired, like, long, long ago, so there is no way that could happen, so, the fact that people are complaining, like, oh, this needs to be more realistic, it's like, what are you talking about, like, you know, movies, like, you know, look at Godzilla, Godzilla's like, 350 feet tall, a creature that big couldn't support its own weight, you know, look at the Transformers, like, robot beings from another universe, like, or another planet, whatever, like, that's not realistic. Building a DeLorean, or building a time machine out of a DeLorean, that's not realistic. You really want realistic things to come out of these movies? Like, you just gotta sit there and ask yourself, like, it's just stupid. Like, people, I hate paleo Twitter. I, oh, dinosaur fans. I love dinosaurs, but now talking about dinosaurs is just, oh, the wrists are positioned wrong, or oh, it's not accurate, or oh, oh, yada, yada, yada. It's like, just shut up. Just please shut up and let me enjoy my accurate or inaccurate dinosaurs, all right? I love both. I love both the Jurassic Park dinosaurs and accurate dinosaurs, and I even love the 20s depictions of dinosaurs. Just, why do we have to fight all the time? They're both awesome. Just shut up already. But, um, yeah, but that ramble aside, the, uh, Dominion prologue I thought was really cool. And I really like how they redesigned Rexy's head to look more like the animatronic. I think that looks really cool. So, yeah, the Jurassic World Dominion prologue was really cool. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2. This game is fantastic. Now, when Jurassic World Evolution came out, the first game... It blew me away, because for a while I've wanted to play Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but when they announced that game, it's like, dude, this is incredible. Like, another Jurassic Park building simulator. Like, that is awesome. And then we have a sequel, which I didn't expect I'd love so much. I was just thinking, like, you know, like, I think it's weird how they're going with another park builder, but, you know, it's whatever. But after playing it, it's like, yeah, this game is pretty awesome. I am not going to lie. So... Yeah, Jurassic World Evolution 2, I think it gets a little too hard in some spots, but overall, it is a phenomenal game, and if you haven't played it yet, I'd recommend doing so, because it is a fantastic game. So, yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park 3 turns 20 this year. Now, this uh, year was kind of a redemption for Jurassic Park 3, because for a while, I didn't like Jurassic Park 3. You know, it used to be my least favorite movie in the franchise. And then Fallen Kingdom came out, and now... Well, okay, that's kind of, like, I don't hate Fallen Kingdom, like most people. I know a lot of the people, like, oh, Fallen Kingdom's the worst movie ever. I don't hate it that much. Like, I think it's decent at best, but at worst, I think it's mediocre, lackluster. But that's besides the point. Jurassic Park 3 is still a movie that I didn't like. Uh, for the 20th anniversary, I decided, you know what, let's give it a watch. And sure enough, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Like, it's not my favorite movie in the franchise, but it's still a lot of fun. I like it. So, yeah, Jurassic Park 3 turns 20 and is actually a lot cooler than I remember. So, yeah, that is pretty cool. Uh, lastly, as far as all the Jurassic Park stuff goes, we have the Mattel Creations Ray Arnold. Now, Mattel kind of stopped with this uh, Comic-Con exclusive stuff. They're doing, like, Mattel Creations, which, like, they're exclusive, like, there are these, like, exclusive figures to their store for, like, a limited time. So, like, yeah, around, like, when Comic-Con usually takes place. So, technically, it's Comic-Con, like, technically, they're still Comic-Con exclusives, but it's handled much better here. Last year, they did the Dennis Nedry, and they handled that so poorly. They, the website was broken, and a lot of people didn't get theirs, and it sold out within, like, not even an hour. It was horrible. 
But here, they actually handled it really well. The website was not broken. I hate Entertainment Earth, so the fact that they have a whole new website for this sort of thing, I think is great. And overall, it was just a much easier experience to get this guy than it would be to get, um, you know, Nedry last year. So, yeah, I think it's really cool how they handled that. And even Ray Arnold, I think he's a cool figure in this uh, line. So, hopefully he, gets he, hopefully he gets a release in Target soon, but that's just me. So, yeah. Now for some Godzilla-related stuff. Um, of course, one of the bigger things to come out, we got Godzilla vs. Kong, which... The monster stuff is great in that movie, but after that, like, the human stuff and everything else, it's just... It's pretty disappointing, and even the soundtrack isn't that great either. Like, we were spoiled with King of the Monsters. I love King of the Monsters so much, but Godzilla vs. Kong, it feels like such a step down from what came before. Uh, not a bad movie, but not a great movie either. So, yeah, definitely the weakest movie in the Monsterverse. So, yeah, that's just me. Uh, if you like it, great. Um... On a more positive note, we have Godzilla's Singular Point, which was fantastic. Really liked that show. It was phenomenal. Great. Every word in the book for amazing. It was just incredible. Not perfect. I think at times it got a little too complex. And other moments, I think, um, like, I don't like how they use other monsters to sort of represent Godzilla's different forms. But other than that, though, Singular Point is a fantastic show. And... Like I said, I love it to bits. So Godzilla's Singular the Point is fantastic. And then we got Godzilla the Ride, which looks pretty cool. Um, of course, I live in America, so I don't really have any thoughts on it. But, you know, Godzilla the Ride, it looks cool from what I've seen. I've seen footage online, very low-quality footage, but, you know, it looks cool. So a little 4D ride, like, you know, what you see at Universal Studios. But, yeah, it's whatever. I like Godzilla's design there. I think it looks great. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, then we got this, uh, short film. Now, this year was Godzilla vs. Hedera's 50th anniversary. And it was cool because when they were celebrating it, we got, like, an, a lot of announcements, like the SH Monster Arts uh, Hedera figure. But they also re- or not re-released, but they released a short film, which was using, like, the original Final War suits as, like, Godzilla and Hedera fighting. And I thought it was really cool. I thought it was, like, really well done. And it's on YouTube now, so if you want to go watch it, like, go ahead. It's only five minutes long, but it is a very fun little show, or little short film. So, yeah, the little short film was great. Uh, GMK turns 20 this year. GMK is one of my favorite Godzilla movies, so the fact that it turns 20 this year is really cool. So, yeah. Um, this is more of a personal thing, but this year I finally got to watch the Gamera movies. Now, when I was younger, I was mainly into Godzilla. I didn't really care too much for Gamera, though I've heard Gamera quite a bit. You know, I hear people say, oh, Gamera's great, but it just never interests me. And then I was talking with a friend of mine, and I'm like, yeah, Gamera, it looks cool, but it just isn't really my thing. He looked at me like I had three heads and said to me, what are you talking about? The Heisei Gamera movies are better than most Godzilla movies that exist. So after he said that, my interest peaked, like, oh, wow, because, you know, it's the common thing, like, oh, Gamera's just the Godzilla ripoff, but... Yeah, hearing that Gamera is like actually better than Godzilla, it's like, well, I gotta check it out now. So I went ahead, I checked out the Heisei Gamera movies, and they were great. I absolutely loved them. Gamera 3 is now in my top four list of favorite movies of all time. It is phenomenal. So, yeah. And the show movies, I got to watch those too. Those are really fun. You know, not, not like, I like them. I know some people don't, but I think they're fine. And Gamera the Brave is another really good movie. Hopefully we get a new Gamera movie in the future, but that's just me. So, yeah, finally got to watch Gamera, and it was great. Uh, Transformers Kingdom. Now, I really like Beast Wars. I like the idea of, like, the Autobots transforming into things like gorillas and dinosaurs and all that. I think that's really cool. So it's really cool that in the toy line they started to, like, incorporate that, which I think was really cool. Like, I like G1, but I think it's time to do stuff based off of other things like Beast Wars which they did, and I think they did a great job with. Some of the figures, I think, are a little bit too complex to transform, but other than that, I think uh, Transformers Kingdom is great. You know, I, I haven't seen the Netflix show, and to be fair, I don't really care to see it. So, yeah, Transformers Kingdom, the toy line, was great. 
And speaking of Transformers toy lines, uh, we have the Transformers Studio Series 86 line, which, it's kind of cheating. Now, the Studio Series line is mainly just to celebrate, like, the live-action movies, like the Michael Bay movies, which are all bad, I think. Of course, that's, you know, a very common opinion. But, yeah, I think uh, making movies based off the 86 uh, movie, I think that's kind of cheating, because it's just G1 again, and Hasbro lately has just been doing nothing but G1, but... Honestly, these are really nice figures. Like, it's like, who cares? Like, Grimlock is a fantastic figure. Probably, like, not one of my favorite Transformers figures ever. He is amazing. He's better than the Masterpiece Grimlock. So, yeah, the Studio Series Transformers line it is fantastic. And even the Slag is great, too. If we can get the rest of the Dinobots in that scale, that would be incredible. I would, I would be so happy if we got that. So, yeah. So Transformers 86 line is great. And speaking of 86, uh, the figures that they're based off of is the 1986 Transformers movie, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And that movie turns 35 this year. So that's probably why they're doing the 86 line. But either way, it's just ridiculously cool. But yeah. Um, so this year was Sonic's 30th anniversary. As far as games went, it was pretty disappointing. I'll talk about that in a second. But as far as everything else go, um, or everything else goes, we got some comics, which was really cool for the 30th anniversary. I have them, and they're really good. Uh, the figures that came out this year were fantastic. We have figures of Mighty the Armadillo, Silver Sonic, and just, you know, just so many cool things. Excuse me. A little bit of a burp there. But, yeah, so many great figures. We have Sonic Drip, which was kind of, it was interesting. And then, of course, the best thing to come out of the 30th anniversary, we got the Sonic Symphony. That was fantastic. It was great to hear all these classic Sonic songs just orchestrated in this beautiful, like, recreation. It's so good. It's on iTunes. I downloaded it at day one. It was just, oh, it's so good. I wanted to cry a couple times. I know I'm a grown-ass man crying over a blue hedgehog, but it was just so good. So, yeah, that was it for the 30th anniversary. The only game-related thing we got this year for Sonic was um, Sonic Colors Ultimate, which I don't have, but from what I've seen, I've seen glitches that look pretty horrifying and just really shocking. But, yeah, but I don't have it, so I can't really give you my thoughts. So, yeah. Um, so this is something that's kind of disappointing. Roger Craig Smith is no longer voicing Sonic. Except he is. Now, at the beginning of this year, he made a tweet saying that he will no longer be voicing Sonic. And no one really knows why. Like, it wasn't really announced. He didn't, like, maybe he quit. I don't know. But basically, a lot of people were bummed out, and I was kind of happy. Like, I like Roger Craig Smith. Nothing against him as a voice actor. I think he's a great voice actor. He voices a lot of great characters. He voices a lot of characters from regular show, which is great. One of my favorite shows. Um... Actually, this is something funny. Roger Craig Smith actually voices Udesky in the Lego Jurassic uh, World game for the Jurassic Park 3 section. And I think that's really funny. So when I was playing it, I just kept calling Udesky Sonic. But that's besides the point. Um, but I think he's a great voice actor. Plus, you know, he loves birds. So in my book, anyone who loves birds is automatically cool. But he just isn't Sonic for me. To me, Sonic is supposed to be this, like, 15-year-old, like, kid. Like, he's energetic. He's kind of like Bugs Bunny, in a way. But Roger just makes him sound like this out-of-breath 40-year-old. And it's just... He's not He's not my Sonic. I'm sorry. Like, again, he's a great voice actor. He's just not my favorite Sonic. Now, when he said he would quit, I was like, oh, are they going to get Ryan back? Are they going to get Ben Schwartz or whatever? Are they going to get someone new? I think it'll be great. But then he came back, and I was really disappointed. But... Yeah, and he's going to be in the next Sonic game coming out, Sonic Frontiers, which I'll talk about later in this video. But, you know, whatever. Uh, hopefully there's an option to change that game to Japanese. But, yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. Uh, this year was also Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary, which was really, really disappointing. You know what Nintendo did? So, Donkey Kong, the original arcade game, I'll be honest, I like the Donkey Kong Country games more, but the original arcade game, very disappointing. Like, er, no, 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 not the game. I, I don't know what to, I'm saying. I'm sorry. 
Um, Donkey Kong, like the original arcade game, is a very influential game for gaming as a whole. If it wasn't for that game, we wouldn't have things like, um, you know, we wouldn't have Sonic, we wouldn't have uh, Conquer, uh, we wouldn't have, um, you know, anything like that. So it's just kind of, you know, that game was really influential. And this year was that game's 40th anniversary. So you know what Nintendo did? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No tweet saying happy anniversary Donkey Kong or anything like that. Just nothing. At most, uh, they tweeted about Monster Hunter. And all the replies were just, where's Donkey Kong? Where's Donkey Kong? And they had to delete that tweet and make it again. Because, you know, they didn't want to deal with uh, the people asking for Donkey Kong. And it's like... Acknowledge the monkey, please. Like, this is one of, like, gaming's biggest icons, and you're just going to ignore him like that. Like, why? It's so stupid. But, I don't know. Uh, really disappointing. Hopefully we get a new game soon. Hopefully we get a new game with King K. Rule as the main antagonist. Uh, people want a 3D game. I don't care if it's 2D or 3D. Just a new Donkey Kong game with the Kremlin's back. That's all I want, so... Yeah, Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary, kind of lame, but whatever. Uh, speaking of anniversaries, Conker's Bad Fur Day turns 20 this year. Uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day is a game that I've been wanting to play for a while, but I just never had access to it, because like, I don't have an N64 or an Xbox or anything like that, so I never really had access to this game, and it was really upsetting. But uh, Nintendo decided to kind of drop the bomb and just be like, hey, so like... We're going to add uh, N64 games to our library, but we're going to charge like th like $50 for it, which is kind of a scam, I think. So I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to emulate these games. You guys are kind of lame now. So I emulated The Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, and it is a phenomenal game. It's really funny, of course, and I think for the most part it controls fairly well. Um, I think um, It's War and Spooky Time or whatever or It's Spooky, those two chapters, I think those are horrible in the N64 version, like, hor like just horribly designed gameplay there, but other than that, the rest of the game is very solid, so Conker's Bad Fur Day is now on my list of top 10 favorite games. I don't know where specifically, but it's definitely in there, my top 10 list, so, yeah. I want to play the remake, because I hear that's better, but that's just me. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for Conker. Um, this year, we got Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which was pretty cool. Uh, it's a fun game. I like Mario 3D World. I think that's a really nice game. A little too easy, I think, but overall, I think it is a great game. And then Bowser's Fury, it's literally just Ultraman, which is cool. I haven't seen Ultraman, but it's pretty much just Ultraman with, um, you know, Mario characters. And, you know, that's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Like, you run around while Bowser's destroying shit, and then you turn into the big lion cat thing. I think it's really cool. So, yeah, Mario's Fury, or <laughs> Mario's Fury. Uh, Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, I think, is pretty cool that it came out this year. So, yeah. Um, the Mario movie cast. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, like... What do I even say here? Like, Charles Martinet, he's voicing Mario. But, the thing is, um... Or, no, he's not voicing... He's the... Usually, he's the voice for Mario. But, he's not voicing Mario in the movie. Instead, they're having Chris Pratt voice Mario. And Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong, and... Uh... Jack Black is Bowser, and Charlie Day is Luigi, and... What kind of movie is this gonna be? Oh... I don't, I, I, honestly, I think, um, people, if you just look up people's initial reactions to this, that's pretty much how I feel. It's just, it's, ju it's just a shit post, but yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Smash Ultimate DLC is no more. Yeah. This game, it's done. Yeah. The DLC is done. And with the exception of like a few DLC characters, maybe like definitely Banjo and maybe Steve. Actually, Sephiroth, too, but I think most of the characters, as far as, like, DLC characters go, I think they're really disappointing. Like, I think the Mii costumes are way more interesting than the actual characters themselves. But, yeah, and I know a lot of people wanted Sora, and honestly, I'm happy for them, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't care. Like, I, I, I just don't care. I'm glad people are happy, but either way, we got King K. Rule. He's the only character I really wanted, so, 
yeah, other than that, I'm happy. So, yeah. Of course, also we have the Switch OLED model. It's just the regular Switch, but with a slightly bigger screen. And it's $50 more for some reason. So, didn't pick it up. I don't plan on picking it up. I was really looking forward to upgrading, but now I'm not because it's just the same thing. So, yeah, that's pretty lame. Uh, this year was Toe Jam and Earl's 30th anniversary. Uh, in my highlights of 2019 video, I talked about that I really liked um, Toe Jam and Earl. I liked those series of games, and the game that came out that year was a lot of fun. So this year is the 30th anniversary, and it wasn't... It wasn't too bad, you know, like, not a whole lot happened. We got, I think we got a cookbook this year. That might have been last year, but either way, we got some stuff this year. And, yeah, it was just really cool. Um, they are indie characters, so I don't expect a whole lot, but overall, like, it was cool. Toe Jam and Earl, I like the games, and happy 30th anniversary to Toe Jam and Earl. Right, so this is a cool one. So, Samurai Jack is my favorite show of all time. Actually, both Primal and Samurai Jack are equally as good. They are both my number one favorite shows of all time. Now, Samurai Jack turns 20 this year, and yeah, it's awesome. Samurai Jack is a great show. If you haven't watched it, check it out. But yeah, Samurai Jack, fantastic show, one of my favorites. And actually, yeah, no, Samurai Jack is just a great show, and it turns 20, and yeah, it's really cool. So, yeah. Um, straight out of nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog. Now, a lot of my favorite shows are classic Cartoon Network shows. You know, like I just said, Samurai Jack. Um, I really like Ed and Nettie, um, uh, Codename Kids Next Door, Courage the Cowardly Dog, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Cow and Chicken. I love those shows. I love classic Cartoon Network. So when they announced this, I was really excited. I was thinking I was just, I was gonna love the Courage stuff, but hate the Scooby-Doo stuff. But, no, I actually loved both. Like, this movie was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. And, yeah, it's great to see, um, you know, it's great to see Courage again. So, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, something I do want to talk about that's actually very tragic. Um, Faye White, who is the voice actor for uh, Muriel, she unfortunately passed away this year, which, very upsetting, you know, very sad. She did a great job voicing Muriel, but this was the last thing she did before she unfortunately passed away. So, I think that this movie was a very nice little send-off for her. So, yeah, this movie is really sweet. If you, uh, With that context in mind, I think that this movie is really sweet. So, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog. Great movie, and rest in peace, they white. So, yeah. Ooh. This next thing I want to talk about. I know I said I want to be positive, but this thing is just really sad to me. Seven Deadly Sins. I talked about this last year, but... God, this show breaks my heart. Like, I think the first season was great. I loved the first season. I even wanted to make videos about it on my YouTube channel back in, like, 2016. But as the show went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. It got way too complicated. Characters were getting ruined left and right. The animation got worse. And overall, it's just not good anymore. I don't think it's good anyway. I know it has its fans. And if you like Seven Deadly Sins, hey, that's great. But... As far as I'm concerned, the only thing the show has going for it is Deanne. Everyone else and everything about the show is just not good, in my humble opinion. But Deanne is still cool. Uh, apparently we're getting a sequel series next year, which I'm definitely not going to watch. This season, this last season was um, really disappointing. So after that, after this season, I think I'm done with it. The movie came out this year. That was kind of fun, but notice the keyword there. Kind of like the show is still dead to me. But, um, yeah. But, on a more positive note, uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Season 2. Now, I really like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, you know? It has some questionable moments in it, but overall, I think it is a great show. I don't really like anime, but Dragon Maid is definitely my favorite, if I had to pick one. And Season 2 came out this year, and it was... It's literally Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, but better. Like, they improve on so much. There's just so much here. Um... Yeah, like, visually, like, the animation looks great. Like, the first season had great animation, but this new season, like, it just looks phenomenal. Like, the characters are great. And overall, this is just a great, you know, new season. And definitely, like, this is what you do. You don't overcomplicate it. You just stick to the, you know, the usual format, but add some stuff to it. And I think the show, like, season two, does a great job with that. 
Um, I think it starts off a little weird, but after that, like, that doesn't last too long. Like, after the first two episodes or so, like, it gets really good. Now, when this show, like, when the first teaser trailer dropped, I know a lot of people were complaining about Ilulu. I think that's a stupid name, by the way. But, um, they were complaining about her and how she's supposed to be 16 years old, but she has humongous breasts, which, really quick, like... I'm going to talk about some kind of touchy stuff here. So, like, if you're uncomfortable with this, um, just kind of, like, um, mute or whatever. I'll, like, uh, shake my hand in front of the camera when I'm done talking about it. But, um, yeah, so, whatever. But, yeah, no, um, so people are complaining about that, which people are saying, like, oh, if you like this, you're a pedophile, or, oh, if you don't like this, like, you know, just this big thing. And to me, it's, like, I don't care. Like, yeah, like, I, like, on the one hand, yeah, it's definitely weird. Like, this show has a lot of weird moments like that in it, with, like, the whole Kana and Saikawa thing. Like, that's really weird. And giving this, like, you know, 16-year-old-looking character humongous breasts, like, that's also pretty disgusting. But at the same time, like, for me, like, it doesn't bother me that much because, for one, like, that's not what the show's about. Like, it's in the show, but that's not the main focus of the show, so it's just kind of like, whatever. But, also, it's a cartoon, at the end of the day. Like, it's not real. Like, I'm not defending it. Like, I think, um, I don't like Lulu's design either, and I, like I said, I think the stuff with, uh, Psycho and Kana, I think gets a little too weird. But, you know, other than that, it's just kind of like, you know, it's, it's a drawing, it's a cartoon, it's not real. Like, people, when Cuties came out, people were freaking out about that. Because they were using real child actors. Like, that's a serious problem right there. Just putting them in, like, actually uncomfortable situations. Which, yeah, like I said, that's, again, like, no-brainer. That's a bad thing. You don't want to do that, you know? That's disgusting that they went with that. Netflix was just kind of, like, whatever with that. But Dragon Maid Season 2, like, or just Dragon Maid as a whole, like, like I said, like, you know, that's not the main focus. Like, it's not pedo bait. Oh, okay, there are some shots where... Some shots are very questionable, but overall, it's like, the show is great, but also, it's a cartoon. It's not real. Like, it's, again, it's weird, but it's not real, so who cares? So, yeah, there was definitely a lot of controversy surrounding Dragon Maid, you know, season two, and the uh, first trailer drop, but, yeah, no, uh, season two, some things I would have done differently, and, again, like, even though, like... I'm not mad, but I don't really like Lulu's design. I think that's weird. And just stuff like that I'd change up. But overall, I think Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a great show. And so, for me, it's definitely an 8 out of 10. Now, I'm done talking about the stu uh, touchy stuff so you can come back in. So, yeah. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about is we got to not only 400, but we got to 450 plus subscribers. Guys, that means the world to me. You guys are amazing. You know, I remember, I always say this when I reach a milestone, when I got to 100, I was blown away. I thought, like, this is it. This is as far as I'm going to get, but we're almost at 500, which is, like, halfway to 1,000. That's crazy to me. So, yeah, all you guys subscribing to my channel and checking me out and just, you know, liking my reviews and everything like that, that means the world to me, you know? Like, I'll be, like, I don't make videos for views or comments, or anything like that, I make YouTube videos because I like getting a figure, and I like talking about it, I just think it's really nice to just sort of express how I feel about a certain figure, so, yeah, the fact that you guys enjoy my content, you know, that actually means a lot to me, you know, 450 plus, that's not as much as other YouTubers like PewDiePie and like, you know, Darman or whatever, ooh, I really just used Darman as an example, um, PewDiePie and like, um, uh, who's good? In that? Oh, Cold Ones. They're they're awesome. So, yeah, people like Cold Ones, um, PewDiePie, uh, Moist Critical, and those guys. Like, yeah, they have, like, millions of subscribers, which that's not even close. But at the same time, like, 465, I think, like, as of me recording this, that still means a lot to me. So, you guys, like, again, like, thank you so much. You guys are the best. I love you. So... Yeah, and that's pretty much it for the highlights of this year. What do we have to look forward to next year? Of course, we have Jurassic World Dominion, which I'm not hyped for, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an alright movie. Uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park turns 25. Uh, the Lost World is my favorite Jurassic Park sequel. I think it's the best one out of the bunch, but 
overall, that's uh, that's going to be 25 next year, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Prehistoric Kingdom is coming out. Essentially, it's like Zoot- it's like uh, Jurassic World Evolution, but it's main it's like uh, more accurate looking dinosaurs and like it's gonna have like mammoths and like extinct animals like that. And I am really looking forward to that. That's gonna be cool. Uh, Sonic Prime, uh, the new like Sonic show coming out on Netflix next year. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, the Sonic movie sequel. The trailer came out. It looks so good. I can't like the first movie was fun, but this one looks really good, and I cannot wait to watch it. It's gonna be a blast. Uh, Sonic Origins, it's just going to be a collection of uh, older Sonic games, like 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, and CD, which, you know, I think that's cool. Uh, Sonic Frontiers, which, there's no gameplay footage yet, so it's hard for me to tell, but apparently Ian Flynn is going to be writing that game, or he's going to be the writer of that game's story, so that's going to be really cool. And lastly, we have the Mario movie, which I think is going to be a disaster, but that's just me. So, yeah. And that's pretty much it for this video. So, like I said before, Happy New Year. Uh, good job of making it to the end of the year. And, um, yeah. Anyway, that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video, which is next year. Peace. Zach out.